Hello, I'm Bernard Keevy. I'd like to talk today about strategic versus tactical marketing and one aspect in particular, which is what's commonly known as acres of diamonds, which is basically your most valuable resource, which would be your existing customers and clients. Now, Steve Hackney, who I worked with for a while, produced what he calls the business growth formula. Uh, and what this stands for is TM is transform your marketing. There's 10 key elements you need in every piece of marketing. L stands for generate more leads. C stands for convert more leads. CM, which is what we're talking about today, stands for customer maximization, i.e. get as much business as you can from existing customers and clients. And then all that's in brackets. And the S stands for systemizing everything. And if you do that, that's basically the key to exponential growth. So maximizing business from existing customers is one of the most important and key aspects to producing exponential growth. So how do you do this? Well, you can have referral schemes in place where you reward people for referrals. You can ask for testimonials and reviews. You can make regular proactive contact with them. Uh, you can make sure that nothing in your business or about your business would put people off. That's called moments of truth. So things like litter in the reception area or out of date magazines, anything basically that will give a bad impression is called a moment of truth. So just make sure that nothing happens in that regard. Uh, when you sign up new customers, you can have what's called a shock and awe pack. Now, the idea of that is that you create such a favorable impression when they first sign up that one, they'll buy more from you and two, they'll never leave. Uh, you can get regular feedbacks because one of the key reasons why people leave is because they feel like they haven't been contacted and listened to. Um, you can produce what's called wow factors. So basically just go out of your way to produce an incredibly good service. Uh, there's a case study about a roofing contractor, which I might refer back to on, a, on another occasion. Complaints, you can see that as an opportunity. So you can authorize your uh, team to be able to deal up to a certain level anyway with complaints promptly and generously without having to refer back to you all the time. The better you deal with complaints, the more likely you are to get long term benefit from it. Um, and basically, you can be seen as an authority in your field, obviously, and you can respond immediately to any concerns from customers. Now, other ways you can do this, you can have what's known as cross sells and upsells. So cross sells are where you sell associated products or services at the point of sale. So that would be like burgers and fries. That would be like laptops and laptop bags or, or software packages. An upsell is where you sell a larger quantity at the point of sale. So again, going back to McDonald's, would you like to go large? That means you sell a larger portion. Uh, for, you know, for things like uh, coaching services, you can sell ex uh, longer packages or packages that include more um you know, services, etc. 34% is the figure. So if you include a cross seller and upsell at the point of sale, 34% of customers will take advantage of it generally. <clears throat> if you think if you do things like um, you have regular meetings, so that could be um, consultancy meetings, it could be hairdresser meetings, or you know, whatever. But if you diarize the next appointment, you're far more likely to get regular meetings than if you don't. So you could maybe get 13 meetings in a year instead of 10 or 11 or 12, which would be a 10% or more increase in your revenue and a lot more than that on the bottom line. Uh, you can do what's called proximity marketing. Now, here's a really good example. We had a card come through the door a few years ago from a chimney sweep who was sweeping chimneys in our village. And he just put a card through all the doors saying, I'm in the village. If you need your chimney sweeping, I can come around later today. So we phoned him back on his mobile number and he did that. Well, that was extra business he wouldn't have got if you hadn't have put the cards through the letterbox. Uh, customer penetration. That means do your customers and clients know all the things you do? So there's an example here, which was a real one I dealt with, where this person did kitchens and bathrooms. Um, and he found out that one of the clients who'd given him really good feedback on a kitchen had gone and got their bathroom done with someone else. And when he contacted them to find out why, it was because they didn't realize that he actually did bathrooms. They thought he just did kitchens. So that's customer penetration. If they'd have known he did bathrooms, he'd have got that business as well. Uh, you can have a more, more products and joint ventures and affiliates. Now, these are related because if you form the right joint ventures, you can sell a wider range of things because you can recommend other people's products and services and they can do the same for you. So everybody benefits. Uh, other important things, the more you differentiate and specialize and set yourself up as an expert in your chosen niche, 
the more you'll be able to charge higher prices and you'll be less price sensitive. Your customers will see you in a less price sensitive way. So you need to stand out, differentiate, be different, but stand out from the crowd. Be an expert, be a specialist. Uh, increasing your prices, again, if you ask people when did they last do it, you'll often get an embarrassed silence and they haven't done it for many years. So increasing your prices by, say, 10% at the moment with 10% inflation would have a big effect on your bottom line and it would be something you could easily justify. Bundling is when you add in extra value. So that means that instead of discounting, for example, instead of knocking 10% off the price of a meal, say you're a restaurant, what you do is you say uh, a free bottle of wine worth £15 or free dessert worth £10 or free starter worth £8. Now, it won't actually cost you that much to provide this thing, uh, and that, but that's a lot more cost efficient. It, first of all, it helps you stand out because you're giving better value. And two, you'll make more profit than if you try to discount because it costs you less to do it. So bundling in extra value. Uh, packaging, that means things like you can have um, a gold, silver, bronze offering, for example, and you'll find a great majority, of, well, a great proportion of your customers will go for the middle package rather than the bottom one. Uh, and obviously how you present your prices, I'm sure you've seen this before, but there's not a lot of difference in the customer's perception between £10 or $10.99, 97 and 10 straight. So you, you might as well charge the extra 97 or 99 That adds 10% to your prices, and it's not really, um, it doesn't really get perceived that, that greatly. And whatever you do, don't discount. And the reason you don't discount is because of this. So here we have an example. Your price is 100, your variable cost is 65, and you're selling 10,000 of these things. So you're making 35 um, on each thing you sell, 35 pounds or dollars for 10,000 of them, which comes to a gross profit of 350,000. You'll have other overheads, wages, salaries, et cetera, uh, rates, rent, depreciation. All of those things come to 200,000. So your operating profit here would be 150,000. Now, if you apply a 10% discount, your price goes down to 90, but all the other figures stay the same. So you're now only making 25 on each thing you sell, which means that you're making a gross profit of 250,000. You've still got the same overheads, 200,000. Your operating profit's gone down from 150,000 to 50,000. However, if you put your prices up 10%, the opposite happens. You're now charging 110, so you're making 45 on everything you sell. So your gross profit's now 450,000, still got 200,000 overheads, but your operating profit now is 250,000. Now, with the 10% discount, your profit's gone down by 67%. But with the 10% increase, your profit has gone up by 67% from your starting point. But it's more than that because the difference between the 10% higher price and the 10% lower price compared to your starting price is 400%. It's an operating profit of 250,000 if you put your prices up compared to 50,000 if you put your prices down. So don't discount, but do put your prices up. Uh, now, customer lifetime value basically says that you want to maximize the lifetime, well, as it says, the lifetime value from them, which means you want to keep your customers for longer. Now, 68% leave, this is proven by research, etc., that 68% leave, not because you've done anything wrong, um, but because they feel like you haven't given them sufficient attention. So that's why you need proactive, regular communication. You need a CRM system to keep on top of it. And you need to consider things like customer reactivation, which is where you contact customers you haven't heard from for a while or clients and you make them an offer. And the offer needs to be personalized, saying how much we miss you. And it has to be so good. It's a godfather offer, too good to, re to uh, refuse. And you have to put a deadline on it and scarcity on it to spur them into action. And you'll find a great proportion of them will take up the offer and become active customers or clients again. Complete this phrase. Your best customers are. Well, they're your existing customers. And the reason they're your existing customers is because it's six times cheaper to sell to existing customers. And they're more loyal. They're less likely to be price sensitive. Loads of reasons. But your existing customers tend to be your best customers. So to maximize your customer value, this is a bit of a summary, really. What, the way you get this is it, it depends on the price you get on average, how much you sell to each one, how long they keep buying from you from, how often they and how many referrals they give you. And if all of those things are maximized, that's when you end up with maximum sales and profit. That's where you get maximum customer value. 
So what you could do is you could identify customers ready for your customer reactivation offer. Uh, you could produce your reactivation offer. You could work out how you could cross an upsell. You could work out your pricing packages, have three different pricing packages, gold, silver, bronze, or whatever you want to call them, professional, uh, private, you know, there's different terms. You could uh, make sure that you have a shopping or offering for new customers, so a customer welcome letter and offer. You could and should raise your prices. You should and could have a referral scheme, and you should and could have a testimonial scheme. And what I mean by a referral scheme and a testimonial scheme is set out, you know, what you're looking for and also uh, some sort of reward for people who give you referrals and testimonials if that's appropriate now if you wanted to know how to apply some of these ideas to your business go to bernardkeevy.com and click on the green button for your sales accelerator roadmap which is where we'll look at your business will put in key numbers and figures. We use an algorithm to calculate some recommendations, things you can apply straight away, basically. Uh, I normally charge for this, but I won't be charging for anyone who responds as a result of this presentation. So thank you very much for watching, and I hope you found that very useful.